Hey folks, um, so today we're having a quick look at um, glaciation. This is uh, one for anyone whose school has decided to teach this. Uh, at my school and in most secondary schools they teach uh, coasts and rivers, not glaciation. But this one I have had a lot of requests for. Um, so here goes, I hope it's helpful. Um, it's just a quick overview of the topic. But obviously, if your school is not studying glaciation, such as mine, please don't, don't do this video, um, particularly my students. <laughs> please don't study this one, um, as it's not a topic that you need to answer in the exam. It's optional. OK, so glaciation. Um, if we start by just drawing, so if you grab your pen and just draw, this is kind of like a cross section of um, a glacier. So this is the land, and then we're going to just pop the glacier in with a crevasse, and then like it would normally just take it down, there we go, with gravity. Now there's lots of things happening with glaciers, they're moving, they're dynamic, there's things happening all the time, um, so we're just going to pick out a few of those. And first of all, if you can put an arrow to this part of the corrie, Okay, this is what we're going to call, um, this is weathering. So we're, this is freeze, thaw, weathering. Now, this occurs anywhere that you can get freezing temperatures. And what happens is water gets into cracks in the rock. So you can draw perhaps some little cracks like this. It gets into cracks in the rock. And then what happens is it breaks apart. So it freezes at night, it expands, it breaks. And because of that, this um, steep side here is getting steeper and steeper, this back wall of the corrie, because of freeze thaw. Now the other thing that's happening, if you draw some random sort of shards of rock, these, these bits of rock, if you imagine, have come from this back wall. Now this is called plucking. Okay, plucking. Now essentially what's happening is the glacier, as it is moving, this way, moving this way, it's picking off um, pieces of rock and that's called plucking. So it's moving in this direction if you put an arrow like that, it goes that way and then eventually with gravity downhill. Now those bits of rock, we draw some more further on, um, what they do, they have quite an abrasive effect, it's a type of erosion, it's called abrasion, okay. Abrasion is like sandpaper, so they are essentially dragged across um, the valley and they're moved with that glacier and they carve out the landscape. They actually act like sandpaper, they're really erosive. Now this movement that we discussed there about it moving out of this hollow, okay, this corrie, if I should just put corrie there, um, this corrie hollow, that is known as rotational slip. Okay, rotational slip. Now that's a circular movement as the glacier moves out of this hollow and up and over to here. Now it's going to move down with gravity because of the weight of the snow. Okay, um, as it moves, areas melt and things happen, and you can get what's known as crevasses. All right, crevasse. There. You can get loads and loads of crevasses. They can be really, really deep and very dangerous if you're climbing. Now, this is known as the Cory Lip. Okay, Cory Lip. It's kind of um, where the ice is melted and you can get something called a moraine. So if you just draw lots of, well, moraine is anything that the glacier has moved. Okay, any material moved by the glacier. So if you put an arrow to that, and if you write um, moraine uh, builds up as, I've just realized that's one R, whoops, just get rid of one R. Moraine builds up as ice melts at Corrie Lip. Okay, so basically as the ice is melted, it leaves behind all of this material and moraine, remember, is anything that is left behind by, or, or moved by the glacier, any material. Now, probably the easiest one to remember, these are quite cute actually, um, you can also get something called 
bulldozing, which is rocks that are pushed forward by the ice, a bit like a bulldozer pushes things forward. Um, so yeah, bulldozing rocks pushed by glacier. Here we go. So this is kind of the movement and what's happening and some of those keywords that you need to know. Um, we've got the Cory lip, yeah, we've got the marine, that's perfect. Right, let me go through the process of a glacier forming. So how it starts through to how it finishes. So um, it starts with snow, put that in capitals, uh, and that's basically collecting, so lots of snow collecting in a hollow. We'll put that in capitals as well. Now these hollows are often on the north facing uh, mountain sides in the UK. So that basically means that um, the snow doesn't melt, so it will last all summer, and then it just gets added to in the winter. Um, then what happens is the back wall, this is the back wall, okay, the back wall of the quarry gets steeper. Okay, and it gets steeper because of, as we talked about earlier, plucking and freeze thaw weathering. I'll just put buckets uh, plucking there. Then next, abrasion. This is your big erosion key term. Okay, abrasion basically makes that base deeper. Abrasion makes makes the what today, sorry, base deeper, okay? Makes the brace deeper. Now, as it, get he as it gets heavier, as we said earlier, it moves downhill with gravity. So that can be number four. So glacier gets kind of heavy, heavier, snowball, you know, a lot of snow accumulated weighs a lot and moves downhill. Okay, we know it goes out of this hollow by something called rotational slip, which is that circular movement. Now, at the end of its life, because they do kind of have an end point, especially in some countries where you know, temperatures and climate change are having an impact, um, what can happen is it will leave behind this, this shape in the land and a lake will form. And that lake is called a corrie lake or a tarn. So... What we can say is after the glacier has melted, okay, after it has melted, a lake forms in the hollow. And then in brackets that, yeah, it's called a Corrie Lake or Tarn. Okay. So very, very brief there, I hope that's okay. I know there's more you can look into with glaciers, but in terms of the physical processes and you know the start to finish and how they're formed like with that cross section, I hope that's helpful. It just brings a little bit more um, of a summary for what is actually quite a complicated topic. So really good luck if you're doing glaciation in this year's paper one. And um, yeah, I hope that's helpful.